So if those three pillars to that child's safety are rotten and are falling apart, then the church should be the pillar mm -hmm. to stand firm and say, despite the decision of the mother, yep. the doctor, and the government, mm -hmm. we are here for the decision of the child. Amen. And the yep. child wants to live. Hey everyone, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I'm You're here welcome. with Abraham. How you doing, yeah. Abraham? I'm good, I'm good. God is good. God is good all yeah. the time. All the time? All the time. That's an old Protestant thing. Eh? <laughs> back, in, back in the days, you know, I remember growing up, God is good, and the whole congregation would be just like, all, all the, the time. time. We don't do it much these days, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. maybe it. we've forgotten how good God is. Yeah, God is good. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's... Talk, but... It's it's one of those topics that kind of makes you feel a bit sad about what's going on in the world. Yeah, this is a controversial one. It is. Yeah, yeah. And we're talking about abortion today. Yeah. Abortion yeah. in some places is justified. In other places, people feel like it's murder. Mm -hmm. Right? Or I wouldn't say feel like it is murder. Mm -hmm. Right? You're taking a life off. Um, with stats, you've got all over the place. You've got over... Uh, 73 million abortions happen on a yearly basis Pretty much, yeah. and that's yeah. taken from the world uh, world health organization yeah. Yeah. Uh, i'm not too familiar with all these stats but i know that we're yeah. taking the lives of children by yeah. the millions well it was it was something like from 1990 till now it's about 1.6 billion so like that's literally a holocaust right so like you have 1.6 billion deaths since wow. 1990. That's crazy. So that's like a ridiculous amount of deaths. Almost a quarter of population today. Basically. And in 1990, you I mean the world population was much lower than what it is now. But you think about that average of 75 million on average a year. Like there's no country on earth who are losing 75 million or no, like the earth is not losing 75 million a year outside of abortion. Wow. So it's a huge chunk of the human population. And it's like, it's kind of this promotion of like, it, it kind of feels like a death cult. It's like a promotion of death over life. And we've seen that cultural tide, I think, um, like we see it with euthanasia as well. Like this idea that, you know, the human life is in our hands and we should be able to just give it and take it as we please. Okay. Right? So, so we we know obviously that there is a difference between the church and the world, mm -hmm. right? As as a Christian, Christians who believe in the Bible, we know that people who believe in biblical values mm -hmm. have different standard to what the world has, of right? Course. And we yes. do see things in different perspective. So, if the world does it, which is what was happening in the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. right? As God was judging. The Canaanites child sacrifice by sacrificing yep. their children, that is a bit understandable. Mm -hmm. But now you're starting to church becoming more lenient on it, mm -hmm. and we're starting to count the weeks and the month, and we're trying to bring scripture into this. Yeah. Well, what's your opinion on that? Well, no, a hundred percent. We've spoken on this um, in regards to other topics as well, where the cultural tide has infiltrated and influenced church dogma or church doctrine regarding these things. So where the church for 2000 years, and even like within Judaism before Christ came, I mean, it was fairly standard in what we believed. Like we believe this, okay? This is what Christ and God has to say about this topic, right? So when it comes to death, when it comes to fornication, when it comes to the LGBTQ agenda, whatever the case may be, the Bible is set in stone, basically, about that view. Um, and so when it comes to abortion specifically, we have had a view in regards to the death of our infants since the beginning of the church, right? We knew that what they were doing in Canaan is basically a form of aborting out of the it's out of the womb, of course, but it's still like an aborting, a murder of a child, all right? The only difference is one you can see and the other is unseen. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter about the geography of the and the place of the person. No, 
mm. right? Whether it's inside a house, outside the house, inside yeah. the womb, outside the womb, yeah. it's still a human being. Yeah. And it is still made in the image of God. Yeah, and, and the issue, so this is where we say the sanctity of life is fundamental to the Christian ethos. It's fundamental to the Christian Christian worldview. So we say God made man, right? men, that's not a sexist term. So it, it, it brings in man and woman, right? God made humans in his image. We are image bearers. And therefore there's a sanctity of life that comes with that. And so he has imprinted his image in that fetus, which is a crazy thing to un, like to think about. And then you rip that fetus apart. You rip that little baby apart. Mm. The image bearer of yeah, God. Yeah. Because the, the problem here that you see often people say, like, they would look at photos, mm -hmm. right? A two-week-old, a four-week-old, yeah. a, a two-months-old, and they would look at them inside the womb and they say, they, look, they don't look like a human being. Yeah. Okay. So how could we define them to be people who are made in the image of God? Mm -hmm. But then the image of God is not something that is outward. No, it's no. it's that intrinsic value yeah. within the person. It's the it's the imprinting of God's value on that human life from that moment of we would say the Christian view says from conception, right? Because we see you know Psalm one thirty nine where it talks about God needing us in the womb, like he's he's forming that, mm. all right? Like God could just automatically have brought us into the world each independently the same way he brought Adam, but that's not the way. He has a process. Right, and his forming us in the womb is a is a demonstration of his love, right? And so, what he's doing when he's forming us in the in the womb, he's preparing parents to take care of this child, and he's preparing this child to be dependent on the mother and to come out and be independent in the world. And so, it's like a demonstration of his love. But then you see the sanctity of life there. And so, when we say, "All right, this thing that God," has ordained the process by which he has ordained a human being to come into the world like we we call in christianity the, the eternal soul because not that it never had a beginning but when it has a beginning god gives it this this immortal quality in him right so that he has the ability to live eternally like that's an amazing thing and you're ripping that apart mm. so you, you're destroying what god has made you are destroying what god has made that's the fundamental tenet of the christian faith so now what has happened is when the culture has become so dominant in a position and it starts to clash with the Christian worldview, we have two choices. Either we're going to stand up and say, no, we're not going to succumb. We are not going to adopt this. This is pure evil. This is murder. This is against God. It is about death and we are for life, right? Well, if we have that position, we will stand strong on the foundation of Christ. But in order to appease the masses and not to not to harbor conflict, and we don't, we just want to live in peace, right? We want to we want to live in contemporary peace. We will say, well, maybe we need to rethink or reassess the issue. And when someone says, let's reassess the issue, it generally means, well, we're going to go in a more progressive leaning. And maybe not take the words of God as they are. We will probably reinterpret it to mean something different and so that we can appease the world. And so whatever the world says about abortion and what science, you know, I say that with quotations because it's definitely not science. Right? What science or medicine says about yeah. abortion, that's our standard now. It, it's culture driven, basically. Culture. That's what the science that they appeal to. Absolutely. And, and it's definitely very difficult because... Uh, we grew up always knowing that when it comes to protecting a child, mm -hmm. you have the mother, yep. um, which is the parent, you have the doctor, and you have the government. Mm -hmm. And we've always known that the role of these three groups are always the best for the child, Absolutely. to protect the child. Now we can see, in order for you to have a medical abortion, mm -hmm. right, uh, you need all three yep. to approve of what you're doing. And all three do now. Yeah, yeah and all three are crazy. doing, yeah. right? So now in many countries, they are fighting for the government to approve of it mm -hmm. because doctors are doing it in every place you go to. Yep. Mothers are willing to do it because they are deciding to get rid of the baby. Mm -hmm. And now they want to involve the government. Yep. So if those three pillars to that child's safety 
are rotten and are falling apart, then the church should be the pillar mm -hmm. to stand firm and say, despite the decision of the mother, yep. the doctor, and the government, mm -hmm. we are here for the decision of the child. Amen. And the yeah. child wants to live. Amen. Yeah. It wants to grow. It wants to move forward. And if the church comes, becomes lenient to it, and I've even seen churches are becoming even more lenient on those who have already received abortion. Mm -hmm. I do believe there is forgiveness for that. I oh, yeah. I we, do, we can talk about yeah. that a bit, but yeah, yeah. I believe there's grace to that because when people do that, and some of them would do it and they see the horrible thing that they've done, they come to repent before mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. There is grace to that. God is there to forgive, even if people do such a horrible thing. Yeah. But sometimes I see Christians talking about it is as if this person just picked up a cigarette, smoked it and threw it away. Yeah, yeah. It's not that. I've never seen a person will be like, oh, I understand what they've done is wrong. Yeah. If they did that to their five-year-old son or daughter, mm -hmm. yeah. if that happened, it would that make would be the on the news. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be an internet national thing, mm -hmm. right? Everyone will be like, such a horrible mother, such a horrible dad, whatever it is. But now it's like, oh, you had an abortion? That must have been tough on you. Yeah. But there is a church. Can you come and, you know, yeah. give your life to God? And I'm like, hold on. Yeah. This person just killed their child. You need to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. There is grace, but there also needs to be accountability. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough for me. Well, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because now we have leaders of churches who have their own abortions as well, right? And so from the pulpit, they're like outwardly like, yeah, I had an abortion, yeah. And it's like, like there's, celebrating, th th yeah. there's such an indifference. So it goes from your point where we're talking about more of an acceptance of those who have done it and not really holding them accountable, but then not just the acceptance of having done it, but then the embracing of the actual institution of abortion, like this legalized murder. That's a very rough thing to to have in the church right now because, like you said, we're supposed to be a bulwark. We're supposed to be obstructing those deathly institutes. We're supposed to be that salt and that light, which, you know, salt is that preservative for life, right? And so that's what we're supposed to be. And instead, we've th our salt has lost its saltiness, and we are just going with the flow and embracing these things that are absolutely antichrist. It, and that's something actually Paul touches on. He's saying that as children of the light, we need to walk in the light. Mm -hmm. Those things of darkness that we used to do, we need to forsake them. We can no longer walk in darkness. Yeah. The problem is when you have people that you've just mentioned celebrating darkness yeah it shows what is in your heart it, so a person yeah. really needs to examine themselves and it kind of shows who their authority is as well because all right let's say the government says this is lawful right but god says this is not lawful mm -hmm. who's your ultimate authority it's supposed to be God. It has to be God, yeah. Right? That's the ultimate authority for the church. It's like if the government comes against what God has said, we are to oppose government in support and in subordination to God. But now the government says this is lawful, right? And then Christians now say, well, what God has said is sin is no longer sin because the government has sanctioned it and allowed it. Yeah. And, and that kind of touches on that my body, my choice. Mm-hmm. First, you have a creator. Yeah. Your body does not belong to you. Yeah. God has given you a body for you to re to be responsible over it and to do the right thing by it. Mm -hmm. Now, just because I have a body, it doesn't mean I have the right to harm someone else. Yes. And people will say, hold on a second. That woman is not harming anyone else. And also you're a man. So who gives you the right to have an opinion? And who, Yeah, who gives you the right? But then if you think about the person that's inside of her, yeah. he is someone else. Of course. Or she is someone else. Literally on day one, the moment the sperm gets into the egg, it develops its own unique DNA. Mm -hmm. Separate from the mother. 
It's a separate person that God has given. And I like even with the story of Jesus, when the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, mm -hmm. the Bible says she was with a child. On day one, yeah. Jesus entered the world on that day. That's it. Jesus didn't become Jesus when he, yeah. uh, after the birth. And we say, yeah, we say in Christian doctrine, that's the moment of the incarnation. Yeah. It's from that moment of conception. So, so for a Christian to say the, the fetus or week one, week two, or whatever mm. timeline they, they want to put, it's not a human being. Mm. They, they are not only ignorant of scripture, but they're also denying the existence of Jesus. Yeah. In the belly of Mary. And they're denying etymology because if you look at the word fetus, it literally means Latin <laughs> for offspring, a child. Middle child, yeah. So, like, so it's like you can use a different language, yeah, but yeah. you're still using the same terms. Um, it's funny though. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic here because n now that Christians have been kind of opposing it, and thank the Lord for Christians who are now taking this seriously and they're at abortion mills and they're, they're preaching to mothers and urging them they're like look we will uh, we will adopt your child please do not kill it right thank the lord for that but you've seen because of the natural results so christians are pushing back and a lot of people in the church are pushing back and now those who have opposed it they're like well okay fine it is killing a child but i'm going to do it anyway so they've the argument used to be, it's not a child. Now they've recognized, yes, it's a child, but it's my right anyway. Right? So well, it's not it's not an ideological issue anymore. It's a heart issue here. It's a sin issue. It is an issue of, of I don't want to, I, like, I don't like throwing that word narcissism, but the culture has cultivated selfishness uh, and, and comfort in your own life as the priority. That's the virtue. It's like, if this is going to affect your comfort right now, right, get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. If this relationship with your husband is not bringing you happiness, just divorce him, right? That's the culture. It's the easy escape. If this baby is going to affect your finances and it's going to, it's going to stop you from achieving the goals and the ambitions you had in the next five years, just get rid of it, right? So what, so, what are we prizing yeah. here? So, so these these arguments are really on the surface. Yeah. But yeah. deep down, a lot of people that do support abortion, they it's, really know what they're doing. Oh, they absolutely know. And absolutely also, know. I've seen a study where they spoke about women who go through depressions mm -hmm. after abortion. Yeah. So those who celebrated it, said it's okay, performed it, they found that a lot of them go through depressions. Yeah, exponentially. And, yeah. It's it's wild, yeah. And they, because they know what they've done, even though the government has given them the right to, mm -hmm. they know what they've done. Yeah. Yeah. But the big issue here, and I don't know why sometimes a lot of people are not even speaking about it. When Canaan started to kill their children, they were nearing their end. Mm -hmm. When Israel started to do the same thing, they, they neared their end. Mm -hmm. Babylon came and took over. The nations that we're living in, it's not one or two. Mm -hmm. It's becoming a it's universal global. thing. Mm -hmm. And people are going to come. And the more they accept it, it seems like God's going to be like, your end is going to come yeah. as well. Yeah. It's it's interesting because that aspect of it, when God is speaking to Abraham, he said, what was he saying about the people in Canaan? He's like they haven't reached the fullness of their judgment yeah. right so and i'm giving i'm giving not reached yeah, the heavens. yeah and i'm giving them this time of repentance and it's such a scary thing because it's been let's say from you know the 1960s post the sexual revolution where this has been exponentially rising like it's been just wild the amount of abortions right especially from about the 1990s you've had a few decades where the sin is reaching the heavens, right? Yeah. And it's like God is coming with judgment or he can come with the grace that comes with repentance. Amen. Well, we've got a lot to speak it's about this and maybe we might even do a part two about it yeah. one day. Uh, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. I just want to encourage you. I understand the world is heading a certain way, mm -hmm. but if you really believe in the Bible and hold 
in the biblical values, then life is so important inside the womb. It's as important as the person right next to you, the one who's outside the womb, the one that has already been born. And I like this quote. It says that everyone, have you noticed that everyone that supports abortion has already been born? Yeah. Brother so, Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it is a blessing yeah. for us that our parents cho chose to nurture us mm -hmm. and chose to choose life so we can have an opportunity to live. But the moment that we start taking the children that God is giving us, mm -hmm. what do you think God's going to do next? Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Take care. We'll see you next God time. God bless. Bye.